So 50 Cent's business helped G-Unit sneakers challenge Air Jordan. Hey, what's up? I'm A-Dub and check this out. So 50 Cent and his G-Unit sneakers were a serious challenge to Nike and the Air Jordan brand, according to comments recently made by Reebok CEO Todd Krinsky. On the latest episode of the Complex Sneakers podcast, Krinsky spoke about signing 50 Cent in 2003, right after missing out on LeBron James, who joined Nike. Reebok made a huge statement with the signing as Jay-Z also joined the fray, and sales went up afterward, especially with 50's legendary G-Unit sneakers. Well, I think I think there was this like lull when LeBron didn't happen. There was also, uh, a couple years earlier, there was an NBA strike uh, in 99. Mm. I think there was 50 game strike. So like there weren't players playing and there weren't shoes on court. And it was, it was, it was a weird time. And this was also the time where Paul Fireman had just come back in because he had kind of taken a, a break. Um, and he was like, I don't feel the energy in this building now. Mm. And so it was like, what are we doing? What are we doing? And then we had this conversation in his room about, in his boardroom about, um, how you know music artists are becoming more influential than ever, yep. and this was that renaissance period of kind of '90s and 2000 hip hop, and and so uh, he was like, well, "What do you, what do we do? What do we do?" Mm. Is what he says, you know. And we were like, uh, "Well, there's 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 one guy that we really feel moves culture, um, but probably not going to happen, you know." And he's like, "Who is it?" Uh, and we were like, it's "A couple of us, like it's Jay Z," hmm. and um, we happened to be working with Steve Stout at the time. And um, he was kind of working oh, okay. on the marketing with us. Mm -hmm. And Steve was in the, um, you know, he had just left music and he was now in advertising. Yeah. And uh, he was like, well, I can get us a meeting with Jay. Mm -hmm. And the next day, uh, I'm in Stout's office and Jay walks in, uh, literally the next day. Wow. And, the, and then like, you know, when Jay, I, I've worked with a lot of athletes, mm -hmm. but when Jay walked in, it was somewhat of a surreal moment, you know, just being the same age and, yeah. and really having so much respect for him. And then, uh, we ended up having like an hour conversation about just, it went right to sneakers. Yeah. It went right to the, the, the era of like the Gucci sneaker. Yep. and So that idea and for tennis the Gucci classic, tennis yeah. Yeah. Uh, takeoff was right there. Because I asked him like, well, what, what would you like to create? What do you like? Mm -hmm. And he was like, well, what I've always really liked was this most, the most unattainable yeah. sneaker is this Gucci sneaker. And um, I, obviously I knew the shoe. So we started to really have a conversation about it. And, um, you know, then we, then we kind of, um, part of ways and and then the deal happened really fast mm -hmm. like he wanted to do it we wanted to do it we had an idea mm -hmm. um and i remember uh you know we were in new york and we were taking a sprinter to philly for a appearance at a store we had in, in philly at the time and you know there was a lot of conversation about whether this was going to work yeah because even though it's jay-z this hadn't really worked i mean mm -hmm. run dmc was promoting adidas but there had yeah, really there was been a this... long time yeah. before there were those big hip-hop yeah. sneaker brand partnerships again. exactly yeah mm -hmm. So we're pulling up to the Philly store and uh, he's like, you know, I, you know, I know how to sell music. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And, and, the, and then we pull up and there's, I don't know, like 10,000 people outside. The whole block is shut down. And he turns back to me. He goes, I think this is going to work. Wow. <laughs> Krinsky explained that 50 Cent signed with Reebok shortly after Jay's deal and it proved to be yet another success. According to the company's CEO, both men were highly interested in the business side of things, but Hove was more methodical and wanted to go against the norm, while 50 was a whole other beast. One of the first G-Unit Reebok collaborations was an iteration of their trainer models that 50 admired. The company redesigned the model, dropped the sneaker as a GXT trainer, and saw their numbers increase even higher. Krinsky continued highlighting 50's business and explained this was the reason the G-Unit sneaker did so well. If there was anything wrong, such as a decrease in sales, Krinsky said 50 would jump on the opportunity to bring the numbers back up, whether it be him visiting stores and more and 50 was also incredibly immersed in the business mm. like he came to every meeting on time ready to go and his first question every meeting was how many pairs we sell this week <laughs> i'm not i'm not exaggerating how many pairs yeah. we sell this week how many pairs were you selling we were selling a lot yeah <laughs> 10, we were, no we were selling like you know 50, 40, 50,000 per per color at a time Are we? we actually no for like the the, the season the, yeah the yeah season. okay yeah. but like there was one, um, and he was always saying, well, how many Jordans sell this week? Ha, I love it. I'm I telling you, it. he was literally asking that every week. Every week. and um, Or every time we had a meeting. And so one time, um, I think it was like 2005, we had a black GXT trainer, which was based off of... The trainer. The GXT trainer was a mid-cut. Yeah. And it was based off one of our old trainers that he saw and was like, yo, I, I like that, that aesthetic. And so we redesigned as a GXT trainer. Um, and I remember that... That back to school, we sold like on one color, like a lot, like 75,000 pairs wow. or something. And it was close to what, and I'm not saying, by mm -hmm. the way, that G-Unit was ever close to Jordan anyway. Sure. I'm saying in that one moment in time, 
that one colorway, I think we sold in almost as many pairs as the Jordan launch for that period. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And uh, I, I remember telling him, and he was like, I told you guys. So you guys didn't believe me. You thought I was crazy. Every time I came in here, I would ask that. Over the years, 50 Cent's business mind has gotten him several big time deals, such as his groundbreaking vitamin water partnership and his sprawling TV empire with the Stars Network. More recently, he's been busy pushing his Sire Spirits company. In October, the G-Unit mogul signed on as the exclusive beverage provider for the Indiana Pacers at the NBA team's Gamebridge Fieldhouse Arena. The deal specifically highlight the rapper's award-winning Branson Cognac and champagne brands during the team season. It it comes after he linked up with the Sacramento Kings for a similar distribution deal in July and signed a similar multi-year partnership deal with the Houston Rockets back in March. All the aforementioned deals will include Sire Spirits becoming the exclusive beverage partner for these NBA teams. They will also include various ventures with fifth charity, the G Unity Foundation. But let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell to stay up to date on all of our new videos. And as always, make sure to keep it all the way locked to hiphopdx.com.